Hello and good afternoon, Xbox Nation. Welcome to this week's new episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. Folks, we have breaking news. We have CFDs breaking records on PlayStation, no longer just in the U.S. We have a new report from Video Games Chronicles, which we will read verbatim. And guess what? Well, it's now tracking in multiple regions. So does success mean a double-edged sword? We're going to get into what that means. And, uh, of course, helping me get there is one half of Living Split Screen Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Him and Pong Soul deliver sometimes a two, three, even four-hour show, which I just got done listening to today (laughs) while I was cleaning my bathroom and other uh, places around the house. Hey, Steel Rain, welcome back, brother. How you feeling? Well, Mr. Boomstick XL, you know we're back in the Xbox Factor Kingdom, ready to bleed green a little bit in here and get to these topics as uh, hopefully we quell some worries. But nonetheless, um, definitely ready to get into it. Mr. Lavron the cut himself, and I think we're going to have some interesting conversations to get into. Again, to your point, Boom, um, is success the double-edged sword, huh? Yeah. It's it it certainly is, but you know what? We, we we're gonna get we're gonna get into what exactly that means because again, from a dinosaur's point of view, it's walking a le- an e- walking the razor's edge, so to speak. But from a business point of view, which is something that I think a lot of classic gamers, meaning older gamers who were conditioned or box A plays games one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to understand that some moves are going to be made that are going to make us feel a bit uncomfortable about the way uh, all of these companies are going. I heard you and uh, Pong on on Living Split Screen this Saturday talk about kind of like where is the you give us, we give you kind of a thing. And if it's not there, maybe mm-hmm. we shouldn't be doing that. But we'll get into that. Now, folks, obviously, we are waiting for Infinite Umbra to get here uh, I will try to swing and grab somebody to get in here as well. If Umber, you know, obviously, because he works midnight, so sometimes he falls asleep and he doesn't get up, and you know, obviously he misses the show. But that—that's life, folks. When you work midnights, and I did as a cop. Oh, here he is. Speak of the devil. I was just talking about you, Umber. You're gonna live for a th- to a thousand. How you feeling, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good. Boom. I was actually here, but I was. Uh, I went to go grab myself something to. An energy drink, if you will, to as, give as, as you need it because you do work oh, midnight. Yeah. So, yes, uh, you need that energy drink. Uh, but it's, 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 it's good to have you here, man. I was just saying yeah, that sometimes you know you fall asleep and that's such as life, but <laughs> you're here. How you yeah. feeling, man? Welcome back. It's, I, it's so funny because like everybody knows it now. Like, I, I have been well established in falling asleep in parties and stuff like that. And they're oh, like, man. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, Hey, you woke up, room? Like, yeah, huh. So people even accu- people even accuse you of sleeping when you're just not talking, which is not true, <laughs> folks. It's just not true. <laughs> right. Sometimes I'm in deep contemplation. Can I? Yeah. Can as, a brother as, we all are, as we all are. As we all are. Yes. Um, shout, shout out to the chat. Now it's been a it's been a good week. Uh, aside from me not getting enough rest, but yeah, man, I've been playing a few things myself as far as just to speak on gaming. Um, I had been playing. I, I tried out that Lethal Company on PC. It was, okay. it was all right. I played with a few friends, okay. and it's kind of hilarious. You know what I mean? You got these things that might try to attack you or whatever, and you got to get that proximity chat so you'll hear each other if they're, like, running away from something or something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah, that was cool, and I had been playing more of uh, Last Epoch as well. Tupac, Ooh. Uh, Tupac yes. Cousin. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Tupac. Tupac Cousin, yeah. But uh, no, that's been fun too. So it's, it's obviously an ARPG in the vein of a Diablo. So if you all are, yeah, fans, people are loving it, man. Like it. Yeah, I think you might. I, again, it's one of those. It's like one it. of those yeah. small, small titles that came out this year. I mean, I, I think if there's already a theme to be said about 2024, it's the small game that are making big impacts yeah. in gaming. And that's all mm-hmm. on, that's all that's on every platform. I mean, that's on if you look at what Hell Divers did, uh Hell Divers 2 did for PlayStation. Now again, granted, PlayStation players not playing it as much as Steam players, but still it's a game that's only available on PlayStation and people are enjoying it. Again, small team, small game, really good. 
You look you look at Pal World, another one that's on it's Xbox and it's on PC. Small team, a little mm-hmm. game that could. Uh, e- 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 Epoch is another one I've been. I I, I, heard, I learned that from you guys, and every time I look, people playing it, I'm like, wow, this is this is a year of the small developer. I I love it. I think I think it really does let you know that this industry is much larger than just the Nintendo's PlayStation and Xboxes. I I, I really do, and I I love to see it. Um, but we got to get we got to cool. get we got to get right into it. Oh, by the way, real quick, as a public service announcement, uh, mm-hmm. Contra is available, and okay. holy shit, it is the best Contra since the OG on the NES. I am three levels that deep. Good, huh? Oh my dude, it is freaking amazing! Like I'm like this. This is good. The last Contra was so egregious. I bought it because I'm a I'm an old school nerd. So I'm like, it's Contra. I'm gonna buy it. It was a egregious, and I was like, wow, this was terrible. I'm here to tell you, folks. I don't know if there's a demo out there. I bought it. I willingly bought it. I pre-ordered it. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna throw my money at Konami because I'm I'm a fan, and this looks good. The trailer was dope. It's 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 phenomenal. It is so well done. It is so fun. Nice. That's all I can say. So does again, it, does it have uh, the classic music? At the, uh, it has great music. Yeah. I, I I don't know if there's a way to make the classic music. I know that there are um like in-game items you can buy when you play. Like for instance, you know, you when you complete a level of certain speed, you get like these coins. You can buy stuff to start the level off on. So you kind of make it. It's oh, it's almost. I hate to say this, but it's kind of rogue light in a way where the more you play, the more things you unlock, the more powerful you go back to some of these other stages and you just decimate everything. It's it's freaking so hmm. good. It is phenomenal. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, uh, but listen, folks, that's co op nice. We got to get into the breaking news of the day. Uh, another giant L. For PlayStation and Big Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sorry, folks, we don't like starting out with negativity, but I don't know about you, but I know that I have now watched a trailer five times, and I'm talking about the Spider-Man five-player multiplayer game that has been canceled. It is called Spider-Man, or it was called Spider-Man: The Great Web, and it looked amazing graphically it phenomenal if you again if you're a fan of insomniac shit then you're gonna love this game i don't know what is being done at playstation am i on a crazy train here i mean look they canceled the last of us online people in the community now again i played it sparingly on the playstation when it was out uh when when factions was a thing i know steel you really enjoyed factions that gets canceled yeah. after three years of, of of dev work, right? Deviation Studios, who we understand from Friday, are no longer existing. They're closed. They were working on, quote unquote, the Call of Duty Killer, which was a military shooter. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. make an assumption here, and if I make an ass out of myself, I'll publicly take the L. But I guarantee you that it was SOCOM related. Now, I don't have that on any authority whatsoever. It's completely a hunch. But if it is, who, as an Xbox, Mr. Xbox to you folks, has been asking for a new SOCOM? Right here, right? No yeah. SOCOM to be had, right? Yep. Twisted Metal. Holy shit, they canceled that too. But yet, we have Foam Stars. We oh, have, me. yeah, we have. We have um, uh, Jade Raymond's game, which is a ripoff of another one, which I think is going to be terrible. They have a, uh, another shooter that we only saw a uh, CG trailer, uh, Concord, which, again, I, I can't say whether it's going to pass or fail. It's going to be multiplayer. But that's what you're bringing to the table? Did it, like, I mean, folks, I don't know. First of all, I, I'm on another screen. Let me see. We got, we got 400 people here. Please throw hey. one in the chat. If you watch the trailer in awe, because I did, and I watched it five times now, and I, I just don't understand what is happening when PlayStation 
cancels their first party IPs that actually have a chance to make money, it is bonkers to me. Now, Steve, I'm going to go right to you. We were literally talking. Yo, boom, could you imagine me and you, Pong, Mav, 3-Bit, we're swinging around the city. We're taking on incursions. We're doing uh, public events, possibly, a.k.a. Destiny-level events where you're fighting the Lizard, you're fighting the Rhino, you're fighting Venom. I'm getting goosebumps, folks, because that sounds dope to me. And yes, I'm talking about a PlayStation game on an Xbox podcast, but there's a reason for it. This mm -hmm. is how you know Sony is in a tailspin. Anyone that says anything else is full of it. Let's talk about it, Steele. Uh, I mean, the biggest reason why we pick it up, because, again, the the main thing that Xbox has always had the advantage on, in my personal belief, has been multiplayer, especially when it comes from first party. Um, they just, regardless of how we feel about how unique Halo is or not, what they could or should not do with the IP, Halo itself has been consistently a very good game. Same thing, same thing with Gears, same thing with Forza. Um, they've been great experiences. The one thing that I have been really looking for is competition in that space right we we always see it from second and third party and of course um because those games typically release everywhere but when you have an ip like spider-man as an example and this is the type of ip that people say well oh, xbox should get something like this and there's reasons why people want xbox to get an ip like that because they know that if it gets enough attention it is more than likely for you to see a regardless of how you feel about live service, but a multiplayer formed game come from that IP um, so it can be grown further, especially if it was something like Spider-Man. Um, this, I think, is an extremely missed opportunity. It's extremely um, disappointing for me. I continue to be given reasons to not want to invest in the PlayStation ecosystem. Now, Sure, that's just like that's a personal preference for me. Um, there's nothing over there that is continually bringing my getting my attention, and with continued falls like this happening again, you talk about that stepping on a rate kind of situation that people say Xbox does all the time. And I always look over the lake and I'm like, man, there's a whole lot of rakes over there too, man. I just so it, you see, you again, we always go back to the push and pull of things, and it just seems like. PlayStation to me is pulling away from the industry that Microsoft is pushing towards, right? Um, and that's the clear advantage um, that is that at least that I see on the forefront. Um, the Spider-Man game, I mean, every time that I go back and I watch that trailer, again, I've like you, Boom, I've probably watched it about five times. Uh, I go back to my playthrough of Spider-Man and just thinking about the concept of, man, wouldn't have been dope if I had somebody else randomly think, swing through the Switch City. At oh, least we, another we, player, because for Spider-Man 2 being right. both Miles and that's and just Peter, one person. And I'm yeah. just talking about one other person, right? Co-op type stuff. Me and my brother get on because we both like and love Spider-Man um, from childhood. That, that has always been a thing for, for us. So it's like the concept that that just writes itself. And then you look at the multi, uh, the multiverse level of it. Again, the script writes itself. And I thought that that's what you wanted from PlayStation. Why does PlayStation not see these things? Whereas us who are Xbox fans do, and we're like, man, that, that concept, of, we want that, we need that. And hopefully, it's like one of the pre, uh, one of the people that I was uh, having a conversation with on X, um, otherwise known as Twitter, that maybe this is just a marketing strategy for them to put it out there to see, to garner attention and see what happens. If that's the case, I still would have to question, why is it even a question for you? Because, oh, at least in my perspective, they don't see the value in it and are still questioning their future. Again, when you're spending $300, $300 million making a Spider-Man game, again, I get why it could be questionable. But at the same breath, this looks like all, a ton of reused assets, right? how much how much would this have really have taken outside of your back end infrastructure possibly which maybe that's the reason why you couldn't do this oh maybe it's because of games like you need a second or third party to help facilitate some of that because obviously arrowhead had it together it's somewhat and yes they needed some help to get the service together but guess what you as a first party studio haven't released a game outside of ghost of tsushima who who is talking about that multiplayer now this is a consistent thing 
for their ecosystem. It happened with factions, which is why people are happy that factions got canceled, which is upsetting to me. The player base is not is does not even believe in it. So you can see why my frustration with at least PlayStation is the lack of vision, the lack of my belief in their future and the want to believe that they're going to do something in the favor of the consumer. They have no clue. And that's at least the way it comes across to me. So I, I think you're onto something. Uh, it is look there. The more that we see these things happen, the more you have to wonder now, again, this is, this is going to be a, this is where I get a bit slanderous folks get ready for it. Okay. If I recall correctly, when there were multiplayer problems with Halo, it was poor management, bad leadership, fire yeah. Phil Spencer, could fire mm -hmm. everybody from 343, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that's the rhetoric, folks. I, I want to be sure that we're on the same page here mm -hmm. because that's what I remember. And every week that goes by, something happens with PlayStation that the gaming media goes like this. Locks the thing and throws away the key. They don't want to talk about it, right? They're afraid to lose their marketing uh, from PlayStation, their marketing dollars. The, everything is okay. The place is burning behind me, but no, don't worry about it, folks. It's okay. Come in. The water is great. The more you hear about this, you have to ask yourself: This isn't this isn't this isn't me running, uh, you know, running rampant with console of war rhetoric. This is actually asking a legitimate question: What is happening at PlayStation? where you have legit first-party IP that could, in fact, be money-making devices for you, but they are not unwilling to put the, do the dollars in or put the people in charge that know what they're doing. Because I was under the impression, Steel Rain, that the purchase of Bungie was to get their help on how to make gas games successful. Well, so Bungie we needs help. So... Who saves the savior is the question <laughs> I've heard. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how else other than to frame it other, other, other than this is a tremendous disappointment. This is a giant is. L. Anybody that tries to defend this, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because who does not want a new Spider-Man game? And maybe you don't. I hear you. Maybe you're tired of the peter parker riding a bike through central park okay maybe you're afraid of uh you're, you're you're tired of that which was one the meek uh mary jane who has now become the assassin in part two i i hear you on that right not a problem but you're talking about potentially and again i'm a marvel stand here folks uh i i make no apologies for it we are about to get secret wars in a couple of years in the MCU, oh, we're about to get Deadpool, Wolverine, and get some crossover right. shit that we've never seen before. That is going to be amazing. We're getting X Men '97. That's going mm -hmm. to correlate with what they're doing in the MCU. The Steel, as a Spider Man fan, we could have seen some crazy outfits. You could have saw. You could have seen the Fantastic Four. Bagman Spider-Man outfit in there. And of course, this is how you make your money. They charge 10 bucks an outfit. I'll buy them all. I'll be a Spider Ham. Spider Ham. Whatever. You whatever no, yeah. Nor Spider-Man. The, the, the limitations done it all. Yeah. are only the imagination of the creators at this point, considering that they have a 900 plus characters available to them. It doesn't make any sense how. We're getting a third Spider-Verse film, mm -hmm. which is going to be part action, live action, and animation at the same time. It's the first time they're going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. We could get incursions that are happening right now that are going to really, that are going to truly affect the MCU. The crossover is crazy. And we could have all had that in a multiplayer game, something that Sony severely lacks steel. I, I don't get it. I honestly, I just don't. No, again, and, and the biggest thing, because I want to make sure people like get it, this correlates with, with Xbox in many ways because we ask for the competition. There's another the thing, too, that I think this, spe this speaks to Xbox on is if you wanted proof for the Xbox tax, this is what people mean, right? How, how does, again, this has always been my question. 
Why does Halo, Gears, or Forza, whichever one you want to throw in there, I'm more partial to Gears and Halo as competitive as I am on both of those games. Why do these games have to have every portion of its game be a 10 out of 10 for the game to be considered good? That's was my problem with reviews back in the day because people never treated Gears fairly. They never treated Halo fairly. It had to do everything or it was nothing. Now, PlayStation can do partial games. They can release games without ever releasing the other half of their game. And people say, oh, it's for the sake of quality. What kind of BS excuse are we putting out there for the community, ladies and gentlemen? And if that's the people that you like listening to, if that's the people that you want preaching to you about your gaming ecosystem, then look, more power to you. Again, this is not for me. I expect greater, especially from somebody that has been doing this for quite some time and has push and pull in ecosystems or in economies or in countries that Xbox doesn't. That means talent. That should be speaking for itself. That's what they always talk about. Ooh, the talent. Oh, that's all X, uh, PlayStation has is the talent. So where's the, where's, the, where's the talent on Xbox? So the American company doesn't cannot ever be recognized even by its own people because it's just not good enough. Although a software company is making hardware, making promises to stay, continue to make hardware, while PlayStation is like, ah, why don't we close down some more studios? Oh, that thing we worked on for a couple of years? Ah, y'all didn't really want that, did you? And, the, and, the, and your community is like, you know what? I don't think I did. I, I just, maybe I didn't. But that Ghost of Tsushima, that thing coming to PC, let me complain about that. And the reason they're complaining about it is because more people are going to big it up on PC than they ever yep. did on PlayStation because of the multiplayer being attached to it. It's just going, it's just, it's a, it's this ever revolving cycle that pe- maybe people have fallen behind to, or again, maybe it's just me taking that RTS view, pulling myself out of it and just kind of taking an overhead look of the industry and what I want out of gaming. Um, but as an Xbox fan, Xbox has continued to prove to me that they know what they're doing for the experience that I'm looking for. Multiplayer, single player, variety, whatever I need. And I think that's the the main ways that this ties in. It's that competition that we've asked for. And I think this can be consistent um, from all of us uh, from for asking that competition. So, you, you and said you know the, what? The RTS view. I like yes. that. You, Just I'm, I'm going to dub it now the, the real time steel view. How about that? You still have <laughs> the real time yeah. steel view. <laughs> the real time steel view. Yeah, I love it. That's the way I'm pulling back to, to see the, the situation now outside. Of I like that. Yeah. So, real quick, I see there's a lot of chatter in the, in the chat before we bring Umber in. This game on, the, on your screen is called Army of Ruin. Uh, it came out last year. Uh, it it's a okay. When I bought it, it was eight bucks. Uh, I believe it's still eight dollars. Uh, it is basically Vampire Survivors uh, with a 3D Dungeons and Dragons skin layered over it. It will be the best eight dollars you spend in 2024. Uh, the game has, uh, I think, about 20 characters to unlock. Some of the levels are mind bending difficult. But it, when you start unlocking, again, this is a game that as you play, the more you give to it, the more it gives back. And some of the magic that is just incredible. So, again, if you are a fan of, I mean, listen, the, face, the truth of the matter is, is Vampires of Virus continues to be amazing. The updates continue to be crazy good. But if you want something uh, different that is uh, Dungeons and Dragons-ish, you should definitely check it out. It's eight bucks. It's it'd be the best eight dollars you spent. I, I I put Jesus probably about thirty or forty hours into this game, and I'm not even close to being done. It is really right. really good. It's really but addictive. St- it looks like yeah, it is crazy addictive. Every time you die, because it's a roguelite, you know, you die that you you know you unlock some stuff. You you spend some of your coins. You buy some magic. You go back in. It's 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 phenomenal. The boss boss fights as you see. I'm like I'm fighting a boss right now. He'll unlo- you unlock the treasure chest. Uh, I, just like, uh, just like, um, Constant Vampire dopamine. Survivors. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah. You know, I, I'm wondering if they're going to ever evolve this. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this type of game, what they would call an auto playing type of game, right? What would they call this kind of type of game? Um, uh, well, it's, a, it's not really a twin stick shooter because it shoots for you. You just move. Yeah. Well, they, they call it, it was auto playing. I think they call it. 
you, so you know. I'm wondering if this is going to evolve further, like past this stage, because this is not quite double A. It's like one A kind of. So I wonder if they're really going to evolve this type of genre and try to take it up to the next level to, you know what I mean? I wonder who is going to be the person to do that. I, I'm hoping that Vampire Survivors uh, continue. What, what I'd like to see them go, because like when you play Vampire Survivors, it's like playing like an, like, a, like an NES game, right? Which is fine, right? It's an NES game that is just amazing. You can continue to play. I would love to see uh, a, 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 a like a 16-bit version of what that would look like. I'd like to see the Vampire yeah. Survivor franchise go up uh if, if if he had the money and i don't see why he wouldn't because i you're going to get him it's one person i'd love to see them use 3d models next that that would be the big leap uh and, oh, and okay. if they, that that for me that would be the big leap i think that would be mm-hmm. fantastic but so according to jay grow i'm gonna say jay grow uh even though it's like spaced out he said it's called a auto shooter an, or, that's, an that's auto right. shooter okay thank yeah. you for the clarification appreciate that uh, yeah um yeah, again, it's eight bucks, folks. Best eight bucks. I think you're gonna spend this year. Uh, I, I think. I think if you go to Dunkin' Donuts, and you get a coffee and a donut. It's eight dollars. So you know, it, it, <laughs> you can play this forever. But listen, Umbra, let, let's let's bring in what uh, you got a chance to to watch the 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 trailer that leaked online. How it leaked, I have no idea. But the internet sleuths that we have are just amazing. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Sony and Insomniac are grinding their gears as we speak, but the Insomniac game that has been canceled is a five-person multiplayer Spider-Man game called The Great Web. It has been leaked online as of this morning. It looked a freaking amazing. It really did. Like, this trailer, like, honestly, the trailer is so well done, folks, and please, I I mean, if you want, I'll play it for you. I'm not worried about getting shut down. I'll just keep it silent, but it you know what? Let me do that. Let me let me let me find it right now. Hold on. Oh, I, oh I, I don't. They might try to get you for that. Oh, okay. you know what? You're right. Yeah. Okay. I was so gonna I'm post not... it up my own like video clip of it. But I'm like, you know what? I'll just quote this brother here. Yeah, yeah. Gets. That's what I, I I quoted them. I so yeah. You're right. You're right. They, they, they'll definitely come for this little channel. So you know what? We're gonna just watch Army of Ruin. We'll talk about it. Uh, look. There's going to be the Sony Defense Force that they're going to come out and say, well, you know, they probably didn't think that it was good enough, boom, and, you know, it's, you know, it's money is expensive. And the games are game development is expensive. Shut up. Stop making excuses for, for the, for the, uh, tr- uh, for the billion dollar company. Sony sh- should have gotten in front of this and seen that they had a hit. Again, I have to cite if, you, if you're going to call Xbox out, I have to call PlayStation out evenly. This is poor management. This is poor industry focus. This is not seeing the bigger picture. This is staying small minded, right? This is, there are management issues, which is why Jim Ryan retired. Sure, he did. Um, I got to be honest with you. I don't know how long Herman Holst's uh, got left in the tank because the more you hear about this, the more that you have to, you have to scream mismanagement. Something is happening at Sony. They have no first-party games. We have Colin Moriarty today, thanks to Silent Cipher, saying that less is more. Less is more. That's what he's. That's what he's saying about PlayStation moving forward. Don't worry about it, folks. Less is better. You get the one big bomb every year. It's good enough. Shut up. That's a lie, and you know it. And isn't I think it, isn't it amazing how people can switch a narrative? And, oh man, turn on a dime! It. I wish I had that speed. <laughs> I'll be honest. But they've been saying that the whole time. That's what they said. They, yeah. they, they said that the whole time. Yeah. It's hilarious. It, it is hilarious. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, if you want to know when we're going to talk about that, I am holding that because I just found out about it literally as the show went live. So I don't have any prepared notes. I'm going to talk about it with C Money on Thursday's show about the about, about the, the now changing directions about less is more, which is a crock of shit. But let's talk about let's talk about Spider-Man. Let's talk about multiplayer. Or the lack of, and then we're going to get into the second half of the show, folks. We're going to get into why Sea of Thieves is doing so well because of, well, PlayStation does not offer their own first-party multiplayer games. Now they have to go over to Xbox, and apparently Mm. it's no longer just in the United States, which if you're wondering why we're talking about it today, because I don't like to regurgitate the stuff. We have a new story from Video Games Chronicles that have confirmed that it's no longer just the United States, that it's number one on the PlayStation charts. It is multiple regions, countries, plus the U.S. and the U.K. We're going to get into that 
uh, on the second half of the show. But let, let's talk about this because I think this is a giant miss. Mm. This is, I mean, look, I think it's safe to say, Umbra, that Spider Man is their most dominant licensed IP, right? It sells a lot of consoles. As a matter of fact, they just released a new bundled version of the game of the year that they anointed it right remember that that wasn't game of the year at the game awards they sony gave it their game of the year so that's what's on the box game of the year spider-man 2 it's a great game folks if you like insomniac you should play it you'll enjoy it this to me though had so much opportunity this is a giant l i'm sorry i, I don't know how else to put it let's get your hot takes on this yeah like this right here is just we can see is part of the canceled games that the, the canceled multiplayer games that mm -hmm. we had going going out there to six right and i would wonder why they would pick this over some of the other games like something like um concord for instance this would have survived over concord right so it makes me wonder right. about that but then i started thinking okay well the budget for those is what has to happen and has to come into play now we already know that disney is asking for an exorbitant amount 33 percent up from now 25. exactly yes what's the what's the thing that uh everborn used to say uh charge them more and and yesterday's today's price is not yesterday's price he also uh, says yeah uh, here's some free shoes which he likes Absolutely. giving out apparently and uh, you know and maybe show, to, but, and yeah. maybe to your point umbra maybe because you would imagine that that Sony may should have some good salespeople in there to be able to maybe cut that deal down a little bit or say, hey, you know, we got this in kind of engagement. Right. Maybe they're paying the high dollar price because they're choosing to keep the game exclusive to the platform. That is then Disney point. says, OK, well, if that's what you're going to do, then you need to pay us X dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's a good mm. point. My, my thinking is, is that it's going to get to a point where. Disney is going to tell them this is not enough and you're going to have to put it everywhere. Now, I, I stick by that. I think that's going to be the point. Disney is not stupid. Disney you're, wants you're, money. So you're citing a potential MLB situation. I'm, that's exactly what I'm thinking is going to happen at some point. Either that or, like Steele said, Sony's going to have to give up more for less. And maybe less is more in that case. How about that? Mm. But <laughs> but I, my thing is, is, if I had to cancel something, this would not have been one of them. Because like you said, it's a crazy sales potential it had uh live service elements in it where you can buy mm -hmm. costumes and things of that nature and they can go further for expansions and stuff like that of what they can add to it the five characters being some of the characters that the fans love uh gwen stacy's uh spider gwen being in there i yep. saw her in the 2099 they had, they been had one of my they had suit. they had miles ah dude yep. they had spider-man 2099 one of my favorites uh mm -hmm. you had and you had, of course, Miles and everybody else, but then you had like you know the, the Sinister Six. They mentioned Sandman, Rhino, Doc. That's Oz. just the start. You know? Exactly. That's just so start. They, they showed, they, they the showed them fighting Venom, theory. right? Which was mm -hmm. show Venom exactly. Uh, some people were like, "Is this actual gameplay?" It was very clearly Insomniac Spider-Man gameplay. You can see it. Yeah, of course, it, it was um, in there. Yeah, it was in there. Yeah. Like like they worked on on this. Like a small team was working on on the side. Exactly. You could tell. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And it looked pretty damn good, I have to say. Uh, you could tell they were far in development. Uh, so I would have to wonder then why then would they cancel it? And I'm going to say I think they'll bring it back at a point. I'll, I will say that. And 3. it might be from what we heard, we saw from those leaked documents where they were talking about um, certain games, uh, the Spider-Man franchise being split into three parts. Remember they were talking about that? <clears throat> so we saw that they're going to split. They're trying to uh, divvy up maybe Spider-Man 3, for instance where it's going to be more parts done to it. That's why they took Venom out of this, really, and gave us enforced Mary Jane on us again, instead of giving us more Venom gameplay. Oh. And so oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess they'll have to be the assassin. Yeah, don't, right. don't tell me that, bro. <laughs> I'm going to get it on PC. Don't Mary tell Jane, me that. You all could probably mod her out on PlayStation. I don't know. Oh, PC, no, right? you're definitely going to get modded out, yeah. for sure. I, I'm still confused why, why they just didn't use Black Cat or something. and then uh, Whatever. Anyway, so it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's dumb. It's like we have to make her a hero. I'm like, why do you have to make her a hero? And anyway, so uh, and more effective than Spider Man. What the hell? But regardless, mm. um, you got, so we got the Venom part cut out, and they're gonna have that spin off into his own thing, pretty mm -hmm. clearly, which is cool. 
I'm I'm all for that. I still think they should have given him more shine and you know and had us get, get more gameplay with him. I think that would have made more sense. Oh, and really nice. enticed us more. But oh, I mean, I they're, think- they're, they're doing the uh, I mean, again, if you're if, folks, if you're uh, books, well, if you're a comic book fan like I am, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I go all the way back to like the 70s when I, I don't collect books anymore, but I still occasionally read them. And one of the dopest um, stories for Venom, uh, I mean, there were a couple there were Agent Venom was a pretty good story as well. But the, the Lethal Protector oh, yeah. Venom oh, story yeah. was freaking mm-hmm. awesome. And what I has me excited about that game, and again, it's going to be small. It's going to be a um, Miles Morales sized game. Is that they're going to tell it their way? Insomniac doesn't follow by the rules. Obviously, if you played the first Spider Man, at the end, it's 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 crazy, right? Yeah. Um, but the Lethal Protector, which is the next one, which I think I think could be next year, and that might be pushed out because remember the assets got leaked online. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, this is this. I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's a miss, bro. I really do. Yeah, like now, there's no saying that is that it's delayed. They could bring it back another time. Sure. Although we've heard that kind of promise from other things, Pro- f- mm-hmm. faction, if you all remember, and now that's nowhere to be found. Of course, so that's canceled. But um, I think that the 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 money potential of obviously with Spider Man, like you pointed out, boom, it's just a he's just a gigantic excuse me gigantic character. Spider Man mm-hmm. makes the most money out of any hero as far as merchandising and all that. I mean, he brings in billion, a billion at least, at least the last time I looked. So, uh, very profitable character. So, I think it'll do them well to do that. I think though that what they'll do is probably try to divvy that up and maybe put it in the next game, if not Venom or something like that, or his own standalone. They'll figure out a way, I think, if they're smart to try to capitalize off of it. Um, Part of the stuff that looks interesting, I'm not sure what the like my motive the motivation would be is just oh just roam around and fight as a team. I hope they actually mm-hmm. put story elements in it. I think that would make it sell it up to them like a right. next level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we kind of see that because it's clearly like very obvious and where they were playing into the spider verse kind of idea idea of it, right? Well, oh, just at the end, you see you just see rip all the it. portals. Yeah, right? you see all the different and, dimensions and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, so it's very just, clearly. Ape the script's already that. there. Yeah. yeah. And and I didn't even oh. notice that, Yobi. Yobi said they showed Silk. I didn't even notice Silk. I, uh, damn, I saw, I watched the trailer five times. Where the, where was that? Silk is a dope character. I must have mistaken her for Gwen at a point where I Maybe. wasn't really paying attention. I, I missed that. Damn, I got to go watch it now. And I got yeah. to watch it again, damn it. I got to look again, too. But <laughs> I'll say this. Um, if they're smart, they'll capitalize on it and the, the hype of people seeing it now. Because we've seen it it's out there. And I, the reason why we're seeing it now is because of that hack. Those guys who leaked it, they just said, hey, here you go. Here's a little, another little treat for you really quick. That's all this is. Um, but this is the thing, though. And I think to go to your point, Boom, what you mentioned earlier, on how this seems like a misstep from Sony, yeah. which it does. Again, if you're going to tell me this right here would be canceled over something like, I don't know, Fair Games or something like that, I'd be looking at you like, why? Why would you do that? Why would this come out? Why would Concord come out and not this? Dumb, right? At least that's what it seems like. But then you look at the budgeting. It was what three hundred and fifteen million just for the game alone of Spider Man Two, right? So how yeah, much more would Spider-Man it cost for them yes. to put? Yeah. So how much more would it cost for them to do that? Plus the marketing and everything in, <laughs> like, for <why>? this. <laughs> well, we we you already know, know the multiplayer part is crazy expensive when you try to do live mm-hmm. servers and all that. Yeah. All yeah. that. So, it, it is, but at least. At least, Umbra, yeah. there is some return on the back end because obviously, I don't know if this is a free to play game, right? Like, it's, it's, it's Sony, not, it, it wouldn't be. It's Sony, it's so let's let's yeah. be real here. This isn't going to be a Sea of Thieves situation where it would be a $60 game. This would they would charge you full boat for this game, you'd buy it. It would probably have a single player story element to sell you on the 7643 to buy the game. But have the uh the maybe maybe it's almost like a, a a gears maybe it's also like a halo where you get both of you get the best of both worlds you get a small single player story to kind of bring you into this multiplayer leveled mm-hmm. uh, multiverse right maybe that's mm-hmm. what it is or or it would have been and yeah. then you get the multiplayer but on the back end of the multiplayer and again I'm not I I'm not a businessman I don't have a business degree but I I I could read the room and I think Sony's not reading the room Umbra you could sell skins 
Yeah, and Spider Man has nine hundred characters, and I really think that if you if you're a fan of, of the brand, there are at least a hundred different suits you could buy. That's you can drawing. have special ones. You can have holiday ones. You can, can have bring in new characters like we you talked could about. bring in new characters. So, yep, it's a lot of ways for them. A lot of ways for them to go with it. But if we're talking about this, let's just look at the cancellations and enclosures of of Sony. And it does give some reason to be concerned, as you were first alluding to, Boom. I mean, if we're just looking at the games, you have this <clears throat> with Spider-Man The Great Web. You have Factions, too. You right. have uh, Twisted Metal online that they were going to do. That's just for the games. And then you go, and that's for the ones we know. And <clears throat> because there were six. So what are the other two? Well, so, one is the, the, the deviation, for sure, the military shooter, which I think was so calm. You also got Twisted Metal in there, too. Well, that see, the deviation is the students. Deviation itself was closed down. Yes. So, yes. but I don't know if that was considered one of the canceled games. Was it possibly that? So that's the fifth, then, if that's the case, their game. But we know it was six games that were delayed. I do. I use parent. I use quotation fingers. Delayed. Yes. But this out of the twelve, because remember it was twelve. So six tw six of those projects are canceled or delayed, as they called it. Um, we I would have said Horizon, but Horizon they're saying Jason Schreier, your your favorite person, he said <laughs> that's still in the works. So I'm not going to use that one. But then you look at the studio closures in the last two what year and a half, if you will, if that long, they've had Japan Studio, Pixel Opus, London Studio, and now they didn't own them, but they were affiliated with them directly. Deviation Games. So there is some concern that people should be having here, and if this was Microsoft you'll be hearing much more concern than you would right now mm -hmm. that Sony is getting. Yes, you would. So you, I, again, so it's, 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 it's moment, double standards. It's, that it's definitely about. double standards. Yes. Not even a question. Halo's right. been around for 20 years, and it's a problem all of a sudden that people have fallen off of it. <laughs> right, exactly. It, it, <laughs> how dare they fall off this when so much competition and with Call of Duty, Fortnite, and all these other games, Apex. But you're right. It's, it's a double standard <laughs> for sure. And I, I, the messaging is part of the problem. That's why we always go back to the old Xbox text because it's the direct messaging that we get from these uh, media people and sites and whatever, where they make a big deal out of anything anti Xbox or negative for Xbox, but then kind of eh, listen, less is more for PlayStation, right? So <clears throat> there is some cause to be concerned here. But again, with the Spider Man situation, I don't know if there's how far they've come with it, it looked the way it looks. It seems like they'll still maybe use that. So we'll see what happens with that in the future. I mean, it, it's a trailer, right? We don't know how. I mean, there, you you clearly see that there's gameplay there. There's no mistaking that that was the game. Um, mm -hmm. How how much of it is done? Oh, it was shallow. It yeah, looks it, shallow. It, 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 it was it, the the world was very empty. There there was no doubt about it. There were certain fights where they were beating up on some regular dudes, where it was only a few of them, and more Spider Man than there were bad guys. So obviously, it was early in development. I I just think, yeah, that what I am waiting to see, because mind you, that we're, we're we're this is fresh, this is breaking news, so to speak. Um, I am wondering and waiting. Uh, whether or not we're going to see any pushback from two places. One, it should, if you are a Sony fan, if mm -hmm. that is your brand of choice, then you should have a real problem with this. If you are capping for them, then don't get on social media and get upset when people yell at you for saying dumb things. You should be like, Sony, this is, this is wrong. I need this game in my life. Because I'm an Xbox and I need this game in my life. Because and I've already said that I will gladly buy the outfits because I'm a Spider-Man stan. I'm a Marvel stan. I make no apologies for that. And I have always, always talked up Insomniac games. Anyone that has been following the channel for as, oh, almost going six years, we're doing this now. I have always spoken highly of Insomniac games and the Spider-Man franchise. And this to me is a giant miss. Um, in a in a time where we're seeing Sony fumble, we're seeing Sony get rid of executives, especially like for instance, you look at what happened with Connie Booth. He was the producer of, if not hundreds of their games, dating back twenty years, and she was sent packing. Her whole team left after that. 
Jim Ryan, you know, obviously you can say that he was retired. I think he was uh, refired. If you want to, if you want to, you know, say that, um, and just look at all the studio closers, look at all the layoffs, something's going on over there. And, and again, if there's anything that we can kind of guys, and this goes for the chat, we got almost 600 people here. This is not console war rhetoric. This is straight up truth. If there's anything that Sony can hang their hat proudly on, it's how damn good their first party games are. And the fact that Twisted Metal is canceled, potentially a SOCOM game is canceled, Spider-Man is canceled, Factions is canceled. Like, what are we doing? Who is making these decisions? Because they're bad. I'm sorry. And I think what ultimately, when you look at what's happening, they don't want to take the long-term investment. That is why we heard just yesterday that they're remaking God of War 1, 2, and 3. They're remaking uh, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. They're, un they're remaking potentially some of their older games. It's going to be – when people say no it's way. the – it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's the remake station. There's no, way. no I'm, literally the report came out yesterday, Steel. They are remaking God of War 1, 2, and 3 for the PlayStation. Uh, they're remaking <laughs> – yeah, they're remaking Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 mm. to release as a collection with updated PS5 graphics. Mm. Does that's impressive. Have a problem with that? Yeah, uh, sure. It's impressive mm. if you want to make a quick dollar, uh, you know, <laughs> throw a skin on it and call it a day. That's that's unacceptable mm. for me. Uh, again, this is a, this is right. What you're seeing here, if there's no pushback from the media, if there's no pushback from the fans, then you folks need to be ashamed of yourselves. That goes for the media and the fans. You got to push back against this because if you show some backbone and push back, maybe. They 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 change gears and they say you know something there is a there is a market out here let's invest but mm -hmm. if they're not going to invest in the Last of Us I don't know if they're going to invest in Spider Man because and he, and this is a good point I both Umbra and Steel brought it up we don't know how far their contracts went with Marvel meaning that it went from twenty if you didn't know it went from twenty five percent take to thirty three percent take for the usage of Spider Man and Marvel IP, which is why EA got out of using Star Wars. They're going to go back to using their own IP. Hopefully that garners a Titanfall 3, which, by the way, yesterday was the 10th anniversary of the Titanfall franchise. And, of course, I tweeted about it. I tweeted right at Vince Zampella. Uh, and hopefully Vince took it, and maybe, you know, maybe we get some sort of announcement of a 3 because we did get that there might be something in that universe that's not goofy stupid apex legends i'm sorry folks if you like it good on you but that apex legends is goofy i don't want that i don't don't mix that goofiness in my in my chocolate i, I don't want that you know i'm sorry i i want titanfall gritty dirty filthy kind of got, got um call of duty that's that's what i want um <laughs> but look let me catch up on the two super chats we got here gentlemen then we're going to get into sea of thieves uh, we have hey. here Atticus drops a very generous $5 super chat. Atticus, welcome to the program. Thank you for the generosity. He says it's a coincidence that Sony is releasing every Spider-Man movie again in theaters since the, uh, they lost $10 billion? Easy cash grab, which is what they're used to. You know what that might also be? Uh, they're trying to save face after Madam Web, which... Oh, man. Wow. Major um, flop. Yeah, I, I got I got it's it it's so bad that it was it was somehow worse than Morbius. Um Morbius was passable. Uh Craven that comes out later this year, uh who's an animal activist now that's, and not that's another flop waiting to happen. Yeah. That is uh outside of him biting some guy's nose off, it's gonna flop. Um I I I, I don't understand that that you need to use the ultra violence aspect if, because if it had up. not been for spider verse every other sony property would be disastrous yeah 1000 percent. spider verse has been their most successful thing out of that ip in totality nothing mm -hmm. else has been close other than the original the Tobey Maguire movie. exactly yeah that's it's, it yeah so it, it's it, i think i think atticus that's why they're doing it because they're trying to make some sort of money Limited. i mean i I, I'm sorry. I, I like going to the theater, and I'm going to see Wolverine and and Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, of course, brother. that's gonna be. Yeah. But 
I wouldn't go see these films again. I, I seen them a hundred times, and I got to go to Disney Plus and just watch them there. Or I, I bought most of them, so I, I get they, they already got my money. Uh, but yeah, that, you're right. They, they're going to try and take blood from a stone. Atticus, you're right. Uh, JJ saying one one seven. Welcome to the program, brother, and thank you for the very generous five dollar super chat. And he says, "Hey, boom, love the podcast." Well, that's very kind of you to say, and I'm glad that you do. Thanks for listening. Did you see that the actor who played in the Spider Verse movie complained that the boy of the Heron won an Academy Award? Um, the I actually, oh, yeah. the Heron. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a Studio did, Ghibli movie. It's the most recent uh, Studio Ghibli movie. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see that. I mean, exactly. I, well, I mean, that's actors are going to be actors. They're humans. They make they say stupid things and. That's probably not going to be good for 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 the said actor. Well, they, they uh, were saying that she complained that the boy in the hair and won over them. Is yeah. That, oh. Oh, well, I mean, she can complain all she wants. There's a reason right. why Studio Ghibli is literally a goat of <laughs> right, of right. animated right. movies. So it's like, exactly. I mean, you're in good company. And, <laughs> like, I don't know. Ducky. Yeah. Like, what do you like, expect? <laughs> and he, yeah. I mean, yeah. Spider Verse I mean, was a part was a part one of a movie. <laughs> so yeah, what do you what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it's, it's a shame. Uh, what, what are you gonna do? Um, it is what it is. They're entitled to their opinion, just like we are. Um, yeah, I, I, I I I think w- when you do that, you kind of look like a sore loser. Um, you know, like oh, you know, complaining. Don't complain. It's political. Hollywood is gross. Um, it just is what it is. But so, a situation like that. The, the the better product won. I'm, I just I I loved Spider Verse films. Both of them are amazing. I actually yeah, like the yeah. first one better really? than okay. the second one. I don't know why that is. I think it's because it's a more tighter story. And I get that. It re- it, it, it's really. I mean, I I like I love. I mean, there's Easter eggs for days mm-hmm. in Spider Verse. It's there is so much there, and the fact one. that we got a live action. Um. Uh, um. What's his name? Oh my God! Uh, what's his uncle's name? Um, uncle predator. Ben? No, no, no. Uh, Miles' uncle. Uh, the um. Oh, oh Prowler. Prowler. Yes, yeah. the Prowler. Thank you. Uh, we got a live action Prowler in there. He was stuck in one of the boxes, and that was actually from the MCU. I thought that was freaking dope. Oh, you're talking about with Don. Don yes, Donald man. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love. I love that actor. He's such a great, great dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a good dude. Um, uh, so I mean, look. At the end of the day, it's it is what it is. Um, but we, you know what? I, now that we have the Spider-Man story in front of us, mm-hmm. it's time to get to the VGC article that I was telling you, gentlemen, about. I sent it to you. I'm going to go to my DM because I sent it to myself as well. Let me bring that up. Okay, so this was posted yesterday. Again, the website is Video Games Chronicle, also known as VGC. Now, why is it in here? That is so weird. They pull the story. Okay, no, I got it. Okay, so this was written yesterday by Chris Scullion of VideoGamesChronicles.com. And it says this in the lead. Xbox's Sea of Thieves has topped PlayStation 5 digital pre-orders. Microsoft's decision to make it multi-platform may literally pay off now of course we did talk about this yesterday the reason why i wanted to expand on the conversation isn't isn't because i want to you know regurgitate it i i want to get what steel has to say i want to get what umbra has to say but there is some new information because yesterday when we reported on it it was it was reported by benji sales of twitter that it was only the united states where it was mm-hmm. number one and number five for the top 10 most pre-ordered game on PlayStation. Well, that has changed, folks, because now it is uh, uh, apparently g- gaining ground on other regions. Now, uh, according to the story, v- VGC says this. VGC can confirm that the situation, uh, of, of course, with number one on the PlayStation store in the United States is similar in the UK store, if not better. The UK's current pre-order top 10 on PlayStation console store has the premium edition of Sea of Thieves at number one, as well as the standard edition at number four and the deluxe edition at number 10. So there are three versions of it, folks. Mm. Um, And all three versions, Steel, 
Mm -hmm. are in the most pre-ordered games on the P PlayStation Network store. Um, this is this is a pretty this is a pretty big deal. Uh, I think it's a big deal because one of the things that Sony lacks is mm -hmm. multiplayer. One of the things that Sony consistently lacks, at least since like the PlayStation 2, are weird, different games. And that is obviously what Sea of Thieves is. It is not a Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is crap. Uh, anyone that has played it finds it to be minuscule at best. It is not the quadruple A that the head of Ubisoft mm -hmm. said it was. Um, sea of Thieves, as we learned, has is closing in on 40 million players. I, I had the report yesterday of 35 million. I think it was reported that they're upwards of 38 million players. Now, is that concurrent? No. But that is people that have rolled through the door. Their concurrent players are a large number. Um, and it continues to gain ground on Xbox, continues to gain ground on PC. But now it's mm -hmm. moving into PlayStation. And obviously, if the three versions are in the top 10, there's only top, there's only 10 spaces. Three of those spaces uh, are up, all have Sea of Thieves in there. Steel, this is a really, really big deal, especially when you consider that um, the uh, CFDs will not or will set sail uh, on the PlayStation 5 on April 30th. We're still a bit away from the game releasing. Apparently, there's a, there's a fervor for it. Yeah, it definitely seems like spirits are high for it. You know what's crazy about it? I think the most insane part of Sea of Thieves selling like that on PlayStation is the fact that I thought Sea of Thieves was a boring game. I thought Sea of Thieves, um, that nobody wanted that because it was a childish game. Um, and that's what Xbox is known Cartoon for, childish graphics. games. Right. Um, that's what, you know, the, no, but nobody's going to, nobody wants to play uh, play these games. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm still trying to figure out how it's selling like that. Maybe Microsoft fudged the numbers and just made it look like it's selling that well. Uh, Microsoft just so people think that ordering it's their own game. I like yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just Microsoft buying up the copies, man. So um, <laughs> it's the future of gaming is becoming extremely interesting. Um, we're reaching this headway where we, we do preach for exclusives, but in the same breath, um, some titles being able to expand in the other communities and the other markets seemingly help the user base on one platform or another. We saw it with MLB. Um, and again, I'd, I'd imagine that they're extremely happy with the turnout with how that's happened. Again, you see more players than ever playing MLB. Um, majority of the players apparently are on the Xbox ecosystem for MLB uh, from how the numbers are panning out uh, from the last I looked. I could be off on that. Please correct me if I am. Um, and now we're seeing what Xbox do it with Sea of Thieves. And again, I know for a lot of people, they, you know, this continues to open the uh, the Pandora's box just a little bit further, right? Uh, yes, so where we're that, going to get into the double-edged sword conversation, right? Where there, there is, there is the line that is a very gray area. Now, me personally, um, as a Star Wars fan, a Star Trek fan, all the good stuff, I'm, I'm a fan of the gray side. There, if there's light and dark, there has to be gray. There has to be the middle. There has to be something in between, and we could, we should be able to at least have a conversation about that. And I think that's where I. See sit more so along things although i am a fan of xbox more than i am a fan of anything else right um if we want to continue to see the gaming industry grow in such a way to where we get more people playing than we ever have before um we see more people than the captain number that has been that for the consoles at least for 30 years um for, if that number is not going to expand then we have to reach people other ways and how do we do that again Xbox talks about it all the time. Phil says it all the time. You hit them on their devices. You make more consoles. You make more hardware. You make different types of hardware that have access to do different things, which is why I'm maybe I'm a little bit more on the optimistic side of what Xbox has kind of planning to uh, is planning to do just because, again, they're part of PC. If anybody's going to be able to blend the two together to give you an easily accessible ecosystem where you can play whatever games that are available uh, for an example on a pc i think microsoft would be able to do that now would that change the conversation further yeah now we might be talking about a monopoly conversation and 
that's something else that we need to worry about because who else who's going to compete with them on that level but look at how the steam decks are doing look at how the pc handheld market is doing the fact that pc the pc handheld market is under a thousand dollars right now should t should at least help some people understand the the possibility of the future that we have there are people that have the rog ally steam deck the MSI claw and can plug and plug them directly into their TV yep. and get a better experience than what anybody could have imagined on a Nintendo switch. And Nintendo started that, right? At least the concept of that. And it's becoming more accessible and it's becoming more accessible than ever. So do we want more people in the market as Xbox fans? Do you want more people to be able to support your games so that you can get your next gears game faster? So you can get your next halo faster. So you can, because these things cost money. And again, it's up to the corporation at the end of the day to make use of the IP, but it is up to us to speak up with how we want them to use the IP, right? At least throw the ideas out there have the conversation because we as gamers understand what we're trying, what we're kind of looking for. Although we don't understand the business side of none of this. So when you hear certain games going to platforms, oh, see a thieves, no, it should all be exclusive because oh, Xbox has all of these things now and they should just give their best effort and it's going to do well. If it didn't do well since the PlayStation 2, it's not going to change now. It doesn't matter how much content the Xbox has. Something else has to change. So that's why I think Sea of Thieves going over to PlayStation, it's great that it's that they're selling more than any other game that's on it that's on that platform right now um, on their charts. That's an amazing thing to see. Because what it proves is that people want to play games. It does not matter what your loud consumer base says, what your loud uh, egotistical fan base says. There are people in that community that want to play that game. And why is that a bad thing? Why do we, all of a sudden does value get lost? How long ago did, did Sea of Thieves come out? And how long did it take to be a decent product? And I, do you want that product to continue to be a decent product? Because again, if you keep it on one platform, it's been proven in every other game. Gears and Halo have the problem that they have with the user base because Gears and Halo are over 20 years old. And the player base that's playing it is us right now, yeah, not yes. the kids. So how do you change the perspective? How do you get them access to that? To get the kids to care about Halo, you got to put them, you got to put them in front of it in other ways. And that means other countries, other territories. It's just accessibility is what we're talking about. We're going to end up having more of a war of services, a more a war of platforms than we are about uh, about hardware. And the hardware isn't going anywhere because we have that money to spend, yes. right? And they want to continuously make sure that they're in that pocket for us. It's just up to us to make sure that we don't let them. So don't let them screw us over in a way that hit us over the head with like game prices and whatnot. And they've already have done some of that. Although again, you still see those ebbs and flows um, and we can still do that to them in the console hardware space. It's up to them to innovate, not for us. What, how do they get more of our dollar or more of our attention or get us to consistently invest in how do things grow from there? So it's great to see the, see if these uh, have the ability to grow on a different platform. I mean, look, again, Xbox this game. is the, the thing is this what Steel is Xbox. talking about is opening the doors uh, for more players to find this game on a platform that does not celebrate their own IPs via multiplayer. Uh, if there is an Achilles heel for Sony, it is the fact that they are, and again, you, what I'm about to say, the miles mileage may vary based on the gamer. Some mm -hmm. people, like me, have no problem playing single-player games. It's why I have a PlayStation. They tell great stories. It's movie. It's cinema-level uh, storytelling. I love it. Not everyone does. People want multiplayer in their life. Some people want both. I could walk both lines. Uh, I play Halo Infinite every day. I also play single-player stuff every day. I enjoy it. I could walk both. But if there's one place that uh, Sony as a uh, platform is lacking, it's their own first party multiplayer IP. Sure, there's Fortnite and there's PUBG and there's Apex Legends and they have all these amazing free to play games. There's also Call of Duty. 
And there are a few other ones you can throw in there that are, you know, for your particular flavor. But they do they lack their own first party prowess when it comes to multiplayer. Spider-Man being another disastrous cancellation, right? We talked about that to open up the show. Here we are, Sea of Thieves. I mean, listen, let, I've said this before, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, I, I, but I think anyone that watches the business like we do can easily assess that the majority of the PlayStation ownership, meaning the, play, the 56 plus thousand a, a, a million consoles that they have out there. I want to say that the hardcore on its best day maybe equates to about 15%. And I'm and I'm being generous there. The majority of people that have PlayStation 5s are casual gamers. That's who they are. That is what the brand is. It's the cool system. It's the in system. It's the one that their friends have. With that said, it's why they have it. So, what? What? what do, who is buying Sea of Thieves? Is it? Is it just? A, is it just a diehard? Because mo- I, I saw some threads steal where mm-hmm. people are are literally attempting to bully people into not supporting this game. Like I, I that I, makes like no I'm, sense. It's ridiculous dude. because I, of platforms. Because of platforms, yes. Mm. But and that's why. And and for me. That's why I have the problem with it, because now what we're saying is we want segregation in gaming. Right. That makes no sense. And now, again, that's me being extreme. That's me being extreme about it. But I thought gaming was about the game. That's what we always go back to. But then what the backhanded side of that conversation is, oh, but if it's oh, but if it's not uh, but if it's everywhere, it doesn't have as much value to me as it did before. What do you what do you mean? So the two years that you you spent playing it, the fact that somebody now else has access to it and can play it with you now, it's a problem. Maybe you're not even playing it. That's how 90% of this goes. You think the players that were playing Ghost of Tsushima on PlayStation are going to magically come back to play the multiplayer now that it's going to be on PC? I don't even know if he's even going to have cross-play support. Right. But probably not. You think they're worried about it? Probably not. That's what people say all the time. I love my experience for what I had in the moment. That Me, biggest example is I can always use me. No matter what game comes out, I take that experience exactly for what it is in that moment. Diablo, best example. It's coming to Game Pass. I spent $100 on Diablo. Do me I too. regret my buying? Do I regret the, me buying the game? Personally, no. I had a fantastic time with the game. Gave me over almost 200 hours worth of game time, possibly even more in the future as it at some point actually catches its stride. Now, that's me. If that doesn't work for you, then you have to make your buying decisions for what works for you. That is the whole point of this hobby. You know, to 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 harp on to what you're saying or to least to latch on, should I say. That goes to an interesting discussion we had yesterday. Risk it hit a space open yesterday. Um, mm. It was because of this person. I don't want to go into details. Anyway, he did this to call this person out and say, hey, come in and come on in. So we moved to the Xbox discussion. It was a good amount of people, myself, mm-hmm. him, Lord Attic, Cold Classic Cage. A bunch of people came through, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the discussions went to the mentality of the fanboy. And mm-hmm. this is something I've Fair. I've preached a few times. I try not to preach too much uh, to down the people because that's what it starts to sound like. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've warned or at least asked for us on the Xbox side of things not to get too entrenched to where we start to sound like a who brothers. Mm-hmm. And yeah. one of those things is what you just touched on in that it has become like, hey, this is our thing. How dare you allow that over there? Mm-hmm. And there's such a point where it's ridiculous because you don't even play those games, but you're Ex- complaining Ex- that it's over there. Talk, please, so please. You make a great point there. I agree with that. Now, <clears throat> I still believe, and I know Boom was just mm-hmm. that exclusives matter because it's the drawing thing to your platform. For sure. Now, this mm-hmm. is specifically a console gamer mindset, of course. Now, mm-hmm. PC, like you're mostly, well, I think you largely play on PC, right, Steel? I, I mean, I've I've had a PC since like, since the excuse me since ninety five. Yeah. So uh, right. it's it's one of those things where I've I even that conversation is difficult for me because I just consider myself a gamer. I don't put myself in. Mm-hmm. Yes, do I have a PC because I make content, work, whatever else the case right. might be? Yes, but I bought a Series X on release. 
Okay, see, so you got it both. <laughs> so, so you, you know got it saying? both ways. But in like for those who might not have Innocent a mercy, ass. right? I get it too. Because it's it's a, I think it's a matter of, of luxury versus and also mentality. Which is fair. Yeah, for sure. Right? That's so what we go back to. Not, yeah. yeah, some people might not have the choice or, or a chance to to afford all of that, right? So they have they're limited. So I yes. think right. part of that is what plays into the mentality of hey, this is ours, don't allow that over there. Then you deal with the fan bases. Mm-hmm. And you deal with our Hoover brothers, and they mm-hmm. for for a long time have held that over Xbox gamers' head about exclusives and how they matter so much, and how PlayStations are better, PlayStation better, and all that type of you know. It's like a and, team, isn't it, Umbra? Isn't the concept well, yeah. everybody keeps saying it can't be like sports, but there's uh, so but many similarities is. outside yes. of. Yeah. Outside of being there being a lot of different teams, because that's the main difference. Yeah, yeah. The only agree. reason it sounds crazy to compare the two, because there's there's very few teams in gaming. You're you gonna yes. be a team of a studio? No, right, that sounds right. kind of wild to us. <laughs> now, yeah. sports, yeah. there's a thousand different teams that you could be a fan of, right? Mm-hmm. But true. there is so many similarities in the mentality, which is fair. Which is it's when true. you have those conversations, those are fun conversations because it's left at that. But then yeah, when those conversations true. turn into, oh, well, you don't deserve those games or, oh, you don't or you don't play those games or these people that don't play those games or really don't care or trying to defend something mm-hmm. that they don't have a basis for. That's right. when it turns into, OK, this is way beyond that. Now you're just fanboy. Oh, now you right, just right. you don't have any other you don't care maybe the way that I do. And that's fine, too. But that's how we start separating the conversation of why I will always go back to. Again, I've had disagreements with people on X all the time, and I'll always go back to, I don't have to, we don't have to be friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. We can be copacetic. We can have conversation. We can agree to disagree and move on. Are we playing games together? Are we hanging out? Are you part of my personal life? If not, if those questions aren't yes, then we're just having a conversation about games. Even moving. Like, if uh, if you're not part of my my circle and I don't (laughs) rock with you, though, I'm going to X you out. Uh, X don't give it to you. (laughs) Because I'm going to X you out. Uh, but no, I agree. I agree with you. And but my my point overall was to say that, and and you're right to the whole sports analogy. At first, I thought it was kind of preposterous. And we had a good <laughs> heated discussion on here, Boom. I'm sure you remember. We that. We're good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good and, and then it led on to uh, our brothers Everborn and, and <laughs> having those are uh, good combos too. Yeah, had Paris on one day yeah. on the gaming gamer circle, and that was a good heated discussion. Yeah. I don't want to say heated. I don't want it to sound wrong. It was passionate. Yeah, yeah, that's a good 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 way to put it. It was more passion and passion behind that conversation. Right. Yeah. And that was a passionate discussion about sports versus gaming. And I am on the the, the side of Everborn on that one. Shout out to Paris, all love, but he was wrong in that, in my agreement, in my opinion, rather, that sports sports can be worse. People in sports can be worse. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. People, all these other, like, I don't want to go too far. You know what I mean? Like, this, (laughs) they've done worse than gamers have done. So, Whatever, but my whole thing is to say a lot of this tribalism of this mm-hmm. is not just in gaming, it's in sports, it's in exactly it's in phone companies. It's mm-hmm. IOD. Well, yeah, Android. you see the people that, that cap for Apple that if you say something wrong, they're assaulting you with their phone. It, it's right. Absolutely, it's crazy. It, it's so the, the fan, the, the 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 extreme fanaticism, if you will, of mm-hmm. this goes far deeper. And I still maintain that exclusives matter, but I'll give you a, a, a point to say why. Um this is it becomes kind of ridiculous at a point. Now you have Sea of Thieves, what was created and and released in 2018. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's six, it's six years old. Yeah, we are in 2024. What are we talking about? <laughs> and now it's finally <laughs> releasing the PlayStation. And now look at this: the game yeah. is the most pre-ordered game in the U.S. on PlayStation, beating out the likes of mm. MLB The Show, which we know play people play more over here on Xbox. Uh, Dragon's Dogma Two. Yeah, I don't don't ask me how. Uh, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Erd Tree, and yes. Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, that's crazy. All that. mm-hmm. And so that goes to show, mentality-wise, I'd say all that to say, mentality-wise, it shows us that it's not that Xbox games are not good or that they're not <laughs> worthy. It's just oh, that our Who brothers have become so entrenched into their identity of PlayStation and anti-Xboxism, mm. if you will, mm. that they just refuse to play on Xbox. Mm. On PlayStation, yep. looking low and behold. So I, I say that also to say, 
this experiment of what Microsoft is doing <laughs> is probably going to expand. It's a very and dangerous game. This is this is like this is the well. this is the razor's edge that we were talking about. And I, I do want yep. to expand on that because look, you know, uh, you, you, Umbra, you said that in the U.S. there were two slots out of the top ten that Sea of Thieves are a part of. Well, the the mm -hmm. story that we just ran right here, I I I'll read it verbatim. At number one, Please. you have the um the uh sea of thieves premium the edition standard, yeah. uh right there's, no that's the premium is is oh, number, the, the one. number one right premium, the standard yeah. edition the 40 bucks one is it's number, number four. Oh, it's um, went down okay it and and, down. and uh and no this is the uk this is not the us it's it's the oh, UK. okay got gotcha, you got gotcha. you uh and at, at the number 10 Some spot 10. is is the uh, another edition of sea of thieves and mind you in this top 10 you have the Star Wars Battlefront collection that releases this Thursday. You have, <laughs> which I bought. So I, I can't yeah. wait to get back into that. I might. Uh, uh, Dragon's yeah. Dogma, both versions. Uh, okay. uh, 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 Rise of the Ronin, both versions. You have Shadow of the Entry uh, DLC. Okay. And of course, uh, uh, the, the EA Soccer, or it's no longer FIFA 24. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's pretty impressive, man, considering that this game will come out for another month. Wait, so it's it's even more over uh, FIFA. It's even more. It's even it's even more, more pre-ordered in the UK Bro. than in the US. Uh, <laughs> All those other impressive. games were new games. Yeah, that's impressive, <laughs> especially over the FIFA because FIFA is big over the UK. So that's pretty. All those, all those other games were new games. <laughs> See, these is what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, man. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, I mean, look, you know, yeah, shout out first of all, shout game, out to Fonz so. Gaming in the chat. Oh, uh, he actually said something uh, pretty interesting. He says eventually consoles will be gone. Honestly, I think both companies it's have be a while. Uh, another maybe two generations before they, be meaning three. Sony. I, I, I mean, again, it, it, Matt Piscatella put out a tweet yesterday where he thinks that uh, we don't see consoles going away. And it's his words, folks, uh, potentially the uh the end of the 2030s maybe even the 2040 yeah uh, and, that sounds and, 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 and i think that he's on to something because again okay i get the demographic we're starting to age out and i say i put myself there because i'm 53 folks so but as long as there's consoles to buy i'm gonna buy consoles there, there, uh, there are a lot of younger dudes that are in their 30s that were that where i were 20 years ago that are going to still buy consoles. So I, I still, I still, and, and, and here's my reasoning behind why there's going to be consoles specifically Is for that's... Xbox. Um, I know that there's this, this, this ideology gentlemen that, uh, because, uh, so, and then this, this is, we're going to get into the razor's edge conversation, Umbra. And I want to, I want to go first to you on that. Uh, if, I mean, obviously the sea, sea of thieves is, is successful grounded is probably going to be another, very successful game. It's probably going to sell bank on on Nintendo when that game comes out for Nintendo. Whenever that may be, uh, I think it's uh, later next month. It is going to sell like hotcakes. So what does that mean? That means that more games are going to be going over there. What games are those? I don't know. But the reason why I don't think uh, specifically, folks, and again, this is just my theory on it, where you see Xbox quote unquote go full third party and they don't make consoles. Why that doesn't make sense is because why not get the 100% for a game sale on your platform or get someone to spend $17 a month on your subscription service that is not available on these other platforms only to sell the, your, your wares and only get 70% rather than the 100%? Because when it goes to PlayStation, Sony's getting the standard 30 when it goes to, uh, to to Steam, they're getting their 30. Microsoft is getting 70. When it goes to Nintendo, same thing. Nintendo's taking their 30% to have the game on their platform. Microsoft is keeping the 70. Well, if you sell the game on your own hardware and on your own service, you're going to get people to invest in your service, which is what they want to do ultimately. But if you are someone who doesn't believe in the streaming service, and there are a lot of people out there, you're going to buy the game and you're going to, and Microsoft is going to take a hundred percent of that, uh, of, of the, of the monies. It doesn't make any sense to simply, okay, we're going to go third party because we're PlayStation's the biggest. I don't think that at all. I think that there is, you, you're going to get console hardware. And I'm going to tell you something. 
They literally just last month told us that the next hardware is leaps and bounds more powerful than we've ever seen before. They told us that we're getting new hardware information this fall. Now, is that a handheld? I sure as freaking hope so, but you're getting new hardware. It's not going away. It makes no sense for it to go away. Um, Umbra, I'll start first with you. Now, again, not, not so much on that. Let's let's talk razor's edge here. Success breeds what? More investment to try and get more success. Obviously, I think that they're going to straddle what games are going outside of the four until next year. I, I really do. Like, obviously, the Starfield thing got kiboshed. Obviously, yesterday we talked about it. Jez Corden, who, again, I have no sh- I have no shame to say this in, for me, is tip of the spear with journalistic integrity. He came out and he said that Hellblade 2, those rumors are false, that that is going to be only for Xbox and PC mm-hmm. for quite some time. I think that, in fact, is the case. But let's talk Razor's Edge. How f- how far do they go into the exclusive bag to put on Sony, PlayStation, and Nintendo if Sea of Thieves is just making bank for them? You know, it's a question I think none of us can fully answer just yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, another part of the discussion that came up, and I, I played devil's advocate to to risk it, who was the, I don't want to say the progenitor, but he was the, um, he was the, 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 the focal point of that leak, right? Or the supposed leak and that the whole thing that made everybody yeah. get up in arms. Yeah. People falsely label him insider. Now, he's never claimed that. Well, well, he's no, never he's claimed never he's he was an insider. Not, I do yeah, agree right. with that. They claimed he's an insider. He's even Tassie wrote it. I'm like, what are you talking about? He never yeah, when that. I saw that, I was like, ah. I was like, yeah. I don't think he's ever said that, but okay. no, Tassie don't do that. I don't agree with that. that. That would only rile people up more, right? Now, you right. this is my thing on that, just to say this. One, um, in defense of my brother Risk It, Risk It is not the type to try to do anything for clout. So I know some people are feeling like, oh, he did it for clout. I get it. I get it. We saw a lot of other people do some things and we're not as trustworthy. So trust me, I understand if you all feel that way. I'm not trying to force you or make you think otherwise. Mm-hmm. I can only tell you from what I know. And That's I fair. know some things. Now, I am not an insider. I want to make sure this is clear. <laughs> Before next thing you know, I'm on a blurb. New insider, Umbra says. So listen, I say that to say he didn't say this from clout. He, he said in his own words, and I played devil advocate in that space. I said, so let me ask you, how do you feel that you, when you put that out, the reaction you got? Because he I, it weighed heavy on him. A lot of people came at him, you know, kind of crazy, and, and he didn't like that. And he felt a little betrayed by some folks. He speaks on it on a video he put out recently. Yeah, he put out a video yesterday, as a matter of fact. He yes. did. And I thought it was a solid video. He didn't yes. go into it both ways. anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad he didn't do that, you know, because that's I, I was warning him against that. Make sure you kind of, you know what I mean? mind yourself you don't you don't get too far out mm-hmm. with that because there's still peace that can be made uh and you all know where i'm going with that but yeah my mm-hmm. whole thing and not to, to go too far but i asked i said how do you feel about that and would you change that and he said no he said it wasn't a clout chasing thing and that he 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 wanted to do it to kind of give us a heads up give people a heads up who were still kind of in denial about that with the hellblade situation i don't know if hellblade 2 is the one so i don't know how far they're going to go in that bag as far as what they will reach into for exclusives, I think starting off small like this makes some sense now that we see it. Because again, I wouldn't have thought, and I still, I'm still shocked by Sea of Thieves. I, I know what uh, you're going to say, and again, please yeah. continue. I, I wouldn't have thought the Sea of Thieves would be doing as crazy yes. as this one, even seeing how that it's done on is Steam. The one. Yep. So, but seeing it That's now true. like this, it's so. like, what is going on, right? So we don't know these things. It's just some things we don't know. Same thing with these these double A games like the Power Worlds and the yep. and the Hell Diver. I thought Hell Divers was going to be good. I just didn't think it was going to be like lightning in a I, bottle good, right? Like yeah. where everybody's like, oh, it's viral. I didn't think it was going to do that. And so there is no way of knowing. Vampire mm-hmm. Survivors, as you talked about earlier in this game, yeah. is a okay. type of it. We didn't know that it was going to be that big, right? So it's like we there's no way of knowing. So I'm going to guess that if Microsoft, because they did have a little chart that leaked out during that whole court thing that showed 
um the some of the games that microsoft saw that could be expendable uh, not expendable let me take that back i don't want to say it like that that could be uh less exclusive and might be elsewhere on other platforms and the way it's made to me i don't quite understand it fully but they only so, showed like six games on that chart and i you know uh so i would think they're going to start with smaller games and maybe work their way up that's my guessing Mm -hmm. So what will fit into the next type of game from Microsoft that, you know, in a midsize maybe type of game that would fit that? And so let's go from there. Uh, obviously, they're going to stick to their multiplayer type games that that's going to go over there. Call of Duty, the games is already there. So it could be the case that this doesn't happen for but for years out. Right. There's no guarantee it's going to happen anytime soon if anything else goes over there. So I'm going to guess they're going to stick with the multiplayer games they already have that are going out. I'm going to say this. Maybe Doom might still stay on PlayStation, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I um, mean, that makes sense. Obviously, yeah. I, you know, it, it's I mean, you know, they, they own Bethesda. Bethesda seems to be the one that where a lot of their uh, wares are potentially uh, that that are current, not meaning like not like not, not like you know, like Doom is already established on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. It has a fan base. How how big that fan base is, I literally have no idea. But from a dollars perspective, that makes sense and does fall in what Phil Spencer said about there are current uh, existing franchises that are going to continue to be there. Now I will say that I kind of I have to I have to draw a line here something like the elder scrolls because the elder scrolls 6 whenever that releases is going to be a system seller Absolutely. it is going to be a game pass seller now mm -hmm. maybe i understand there's going to be people that are going to push back in the chat like well wait a second boom they told us that the console sales aren't important you can play anywhere and you are correct in saying so but they still have to try and sell the service they mm -hmm. still have to try and get 50 75 100 mm -hmm. million subscribers Expand. Yeah, and, and even if it's not their focal point, they still do want to sell hardware. It's not like they say, they no, we don't want that. It's just not the biggest focal point. The biggest focal point is Game Pass. All right. That's all it is. But yeah. to go to that point, um, again, we don't know, and I can't. I'm, I, we can only speculate, and that's fine for us to do. I know people don't talk about bad news, but you can talk hey, about good news. Speculate. But we can speculate percolate. about everything. We're time for the percolate. Either every, some things are allowed or nothing. Everything is allowed or nothing, should I say. But so... <laughs> I, we're going to speculate it's i'm going to guess that they'll stick to they'll try to keep it light because they saw our reaction they know it's not going to get be well received <laughs> so i would imagine they'll stick to what like maybe the bethesda games will stay multi-plat yes it makes sense it yeah makes sense. And, go, and keep it that way for a while and then if if business needs dictated or those above feel you know, the, as people keep saying, the bean counters, the Amy Hoods and such. <laughs> if they, they, they come in and like, hey, we need another game put over there. Maybe that might be the case. I, I don't know. Um, uh, I would say, again, the ones that make the most sense is something that's got to be a recurring. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mo recurring monetary value. Yes. To me, that would be live service type games. Now, mm -hmm. the danger of that, of course, boom, is Halo. <laughs> so is gears so yeah. forza they could, also, you know, for, they could be foolish in my opinion to bring to put those over there <laughs> but if they did decide to the the much rumored um uh marcus phoenix collection just happened to dabble over there as well as over here how would that make everybody feel because i don't think i would i have already I, I, listen i'm a die in the stone I'm gonna die on this hill. It's not a problem. I'm, 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 I'm my heels are dug in. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are brand IP is one of the most important things in any business. When you can equate a certain IP or brand with a platform, you dilute it if you if uh, you water it down, dilute it however you want to put it. I understand that Halo might you know get some players on PlayStation, but that is that is literally legendary IP. It right now you got it on Xbox, you got it on PC. 
put out a good put out more Halo single player stuff and the fans will come back. Um obviously we know that they're working on a Helldivers 2 Forge mode, which is gonna be dropping. I don't know when, but we know that the uh, the Red Falcons are the ones that are doing it. They are legendary uh forgers, that's what they do, and it's gonna come out and it's probably gonna be dope as F. Um I, I personally think that there is a that the core three pillars need to remain Xbox exclusive, and I <laughs> and and I and I'm a whole Phil to I'm a whole Phil Spencer to his word. He said that they were not going to do anything to damage the brand, Umbra. Mm-hmm. I think you damage the brand irreparably. Uh, you do irreparable damage to the brand if you take those core, those and again you have to add to this core. I don't think that there's a place on PlayStation for Fable. I don't think that there's a place on PlayStation for Perfect Dark. I don't think there's a place on PlayStation, even though there is existing consumers and fans of something like The Elder Scrolls. If you're going to drop that when in 26 as a launch title, people are going to buy your box. People are going to buy your hybrid handheld. Um, th- these, these are things that are system sellers. You do not dilute your brand. Again, I'm I'm old here, bro. I'm the dinosaur. It's it's fine. I get it, but that's just my hot take on it. No, yeah, I, I agree, and it, it's a it's a danger there. We had the discussion as well. What is too much? Right? Yes, and you yeah. can't go that far to dilute it. You know, we were talking about that, and we were talking about Steam, and if there was a possible actual Steam competitor, what it, what makes Steam what it is is you know having incredible ease of use and having all these mm-hmm. games come to it etc now what if they yes. now steam is not forced into this yet but what if they had another um uh what's the word i'm looking for launcher that that competed against it and actually had exclusives tied to it a la a, a sony in this sense yeah and they still get all the other stuff that steam gets now steam has to start to, to get their exclusives too you see what i mean now they have to play that exclusive game so it's, it's a dangerous game to play but uh um, Epic was doing that for a while where they were getting uh you know exclusive yeah. stuff and they yep. were Epic for did it. it, they did it, yeah. But now Steam doesn't really have to because nobody really competes with Steam, right? So right. um, my thing is is on this is, is I don't know how it's gonna play out. I just wonder I would I would venture to say they're gonna stick to any multiplayer live service games. That just makes the most sense to me. I'm I'm still confused on pentiment going over I, I just see no use for that being on any other platform than what it started as is the passion project it is but if they can make more money from it you know hey all good right but i just still don't really see that one grounded makes sense to me though yeah. they don't really have any mtx tra- uh, tra- uh you know tied to it they can that's add right it. yeah it's just a game yeah they can add it i guess you know what i mean and i can see it they can pay for it you know? Yep. Well, yeah they're gonna pay for the game they're obviously gonna pay for the, game. the game they're gonna yeah uh, yeah it, it's, it's got it's a good play s- base yeah, I would just figure like most like MTX type based or mm-hmm. live service games would make the most sense. So that's where I would look toward as far as what Microsoft might do. I mean, it's it's, it's again, we're, we're going to see it's four games. Uh, I know that uh, I want to bring Steel in the conversation, but Steel, before I bring you in on the conversation, brother, let's uh, so let me catch up on these super chats here. Quite a few <laughs> generous uh, uh, folks in the chat. First one, Gamer by Choice drops a very generous five dollar. Super chat and says, Steel, the vocal minority are frauds. Many that <laughs> hated on the games like Sea of Thieves are excited because they can play it now. Yep. Can't wait for the future. It's funny. Yeah. I, it's, it, it, it's, he's, he's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, generous friend okay. of the program, Bold Alpha Wolfpack drops a very generous dollar super chat and says, Wouldn't it make sense? I uh, said, wouldn't make sense because Satya said in the FTC trial, exclusives are necessary because our competitors mm-hmm. do it. When exactly. that's no longer the case, now we're talking sense. Um, and he's he's right. Satya did say that the reason why exclusives uh, are on Xbox is because everyone else does them. And he's not wrong. Uh, I, so I Again, uh, we're listening to you guys on Saturday's show, you actually made mention of it, Steel. Uh, with Pong that, you know, where is the give and take here? Because Sony's mm-hmm. taking, and again, I, I understand that their, their players are paying for the game to be there and Microsoft is making money, but Microsoft, yes, they're getting the money, but there's a lot of people asking, where are the Sony games? 
Um, I, I don't know if that's ever going to happen unless they're forced to do it. The, 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 the Umbra's uh, comment about Marvel potentially, and again, this is subjective. Uh, I think he's onto something. I think there's going to come a point where Marvel getting expensive. Can see and is like, you know what? This is this one trick pony of selling it only here. Now, maybe that changes if they do day and date, like Spider Man 3, which is expected mm-hmm. to be $400 million. Uh, I don't know how that's gonna how it's gonna work out with the bean counters over at Sony. But that's what that came out of the leaks. Um, I, I don't know if can Sony afford to sell five million copies in the in, in, in three months? Is is that enough for a four hundred million dollar game if it's only available on one box? I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know they're gonna have to drop it in other places. Now, obviously, they could do a day and date uh, PC release, which which would. Uh, you know, relieve some of the stress of that. But even then, you know, you don't know what Marvel is going to be asking for next. And if they're not happy with the sales, you might get a situation like MLB. You you just don't know. Um, so uh, g- thank you so much for the gener- generosity, bold out for Wolfpack. Uh, Dreadful Sean, who's been a channel member for 14 Brilliant. months, brother. Thank you so much for that. He says, The four franchises that should never be on PlayStation are Halo, Forza, Gears, and Fable. For me, the Mm -hmm. franchise that X that put Xbox on the map in the 360 gen. I I I agree, thousand percent. Uh, I think that there is, you know, Fable's getting a relaunch, uh, uh, if you will. Um, Mm -hmm. Gears is. I'm sorry, it's it is a pillar. Um, I don't Mm -hmm. know. If it's going to make money, but then again, I didn't think CD was going to make money. And look, I was proven wrong, but I, I still think that for me, I agree with you. So let's bring you on. Let's talk about the razor's edge and the and the potential of how far do you walk with your first party games? Because obviously, Sea of Thieves is selling. Grounded mm-hmm. is going to sell. I I know that for a while, Hi-Fi Rush both versions. We're in the top 10. They've obviously fallen out of the top 10, but I don't know mm-hmm. what the ultimate number is going to sell. And obviously, Sea of Thieves, check this out. This is what's interesting. Sea of Thieves and um, Hi-Fi not yet announced for the Switch. I would imagine that's coming Switch 2. Hopefully. More, yeah. you know, more money, the more money, again, this is the double-edged show we're talking about. The more money they make, the more that the bean counters above Phil Spencer and be like, wait, a second you know we're leaving money on the table let's talk about it uh again i the the main part of this and i'll try to touch on from a few angles um as far as we'll start with the the whole hellblade thing um if hellblade ends up coming to other platforms it ends up coming to other platforms if it ends up being two years later um sure that it came to the platform so whether you're right now or you're right later um anybody can do that right um now again as far as sources go and all those things uh i'm not going to judge anybody on their opinions how they feel what they believe or any of that because at the end of the day this is just conversation and it is opinion um it is another thing when you try to make it when when some people try to make it come across as if it is facts um so much to the point that they will not back down from their opinion um for that reason which is fine you're also entitled to that um but as, as friendships go as, pe- as people go um as communication goes it's not always about being right all the time and that's not and you know it's and it's not it doesn't work for everybody and i understand that's fair but that's why i love these conversations because as long as we can stay on what is important to us individually and then concede at some point and say, Hey, I may not agree with you on everything, but I agree with you on some points. Hey, let's chop it up, play some games, move from there. So move forward. I don't think that it devalues the console any more, any more than games, uh, console games coming to PC. If we were worried about the devalue of consoles, then we should have been crying about this when games were coming to PC. Matter of fact, in 2012 is when I when I personally started noticing more games coming to PC, which signified to me as somebody who's been in the PC market for some time and also has always been a console gamer. I was able to see, man, that's that's super dope. Now I, I can there's some of these games I can go back and forth with. There's going to be more people playing. There's going to be oh man, I just thought the concept of that of that was amazing because. Back in the day, PC gamers used to act like they didn't want console games, and then console games used to act like they didn't want PC games. And now we have a blend, and I'm I'm I'm, and I'm loving the blend that we're getting. Now, as far as exclusives go, you can still, you can still 
do your exclusive plays, but they are exactly that. They are plays now. Back in the day and the mentality of how we look at exclusives is because back in the day, certain platforms did certain things that the other platform didn't do. There were differences. Again, I'm going to continue to ask this on every show that I'm on. What is the differences in the consoles that we have now outside of the ecosystem and platform? If you can't tell me anything outside of the SSD, then what direction are we going? We're getting closer for things to be more intrinsically part of the same ecosystem. They're already part of the same architecture. And if that is the case, it is a fool's dream to think that Sony is going to all of a sudden try to change their, just as using this as an example, how they make games Yep. when they're saying that it costs more to make games than it ever has before. To me, that tells me, so things are going to continue to down this path. So if an exclusive now is how Sony has been treating their second and third party exclusive, i.e. like a Final Fantasy. If exclusive now for Xbox or hell, Hellblade is going to be on, on this platform for three years. Then it might go to PlayStation. Maybe it goes to a different platform, but it's already going to PC. So that's already devaluing the console from that thought process. And if that, if it, the game going to PC doesn't devalue the console enough for you, if you're not going to go sell your console today and go buy a PC, then it didn't devalue the console. If the game goes to PlayStation, and I say this about single player games all the time, my biggest disappointment with Starfield is that it's going to be a better game later. That's what, that is my biggest yeah. disappointment with single player games in totality. Example, Spider-Man 2018. When I played it on PC, it was a league's better game than what I experienced in 2018. Point blank period. It wasn't even close. Now, I'm not a gamer who I regret my playtime, my decisions, and none of that. I take the experiences for what they are. But if more people end up getting to play, again, Starfield, a game that was supposed to sell gangbuster numbers, supposed to be the biggest game ever, if that game couldn't do it for Xbox, then what other game will? Hellblade will not do it. I'm sorry to tell you guys, it's an impressive game, but it is not going to do the numbers that people think that it is. It is far out of the question. It is going to be a very talked about game. It is going to be a very impressive game. And shucks, I'm going to have a fantastic time with the game because I love the first one. But it is not the game that people are looking for. So what do you do to complement that? Well, if you want to Hellblade 3, you know what I need to do? I need to release this game at least two years later, and I can do that because I'm releasing the games day and date to PC. If PlayStation was doing that, they could continue their strategy exactly the way that they're doing it right now, and yep. everything would be copacetic for them because they have the brand power. Yeah. But they're not doing that. They don't have a team for that. So when we're talking about this exclusive conversation, this fine line, the reason that Xbox can do it and Sony doesn't have to do it, what games are you truly asking for from Sony outside of single player games that are going to be better later anyway that you could wait on? They're not the zeitgeist. They're not in conversation. They're not multiplayer games. What games? Please signify this to me. Spider-Man is about the only one. And you know something, just for, for context about you were saying about, about how the cost has gone up still. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did I did a check and I, I knew the number, but I just wanted to confirm it. Spider Man 2018, folks, cost Sony 90 million dollars to make. Mm -hmm. Right now, that game has made its money. It's, it sold, I believe, well over 25 million copies. It's made its money back. Um, if you compare that to Spider Man 20 uh, 2023, 315 million dollars to make that game. That's three times, three and a half times the amount. That's um, why, which is again 2018 to 2023, it's five years. I'm no mathematician, folks, but that it's only five years. In five years, it went up three and a half times. Spider Man 3 from the leaks is expected at 400 plus million dollars. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I, I don't and it's know. A very, and it's a very quality. Again, nothing. Is, uh, nobody is a, is a, ignoring the quality of these things. I'm not saying right. that these games got to go away. But if you want these to continue to exist, I'm going. I'm telling you guys. As, as again, pulling myself out of the world, looking at the over overhead view. There are not many games like Baldur's Gate 3, like Hogwarts, like uh, like Hogwarts Legacy, that are going to release that are single player games that get the attention of a community. 
That's just not going to happen. But people talk about single player games or totality like they are. There are very few and far in between. If you want to continue getting those experiences into the future, something has to change. Certain games being on certain platforms and staying there forever is not working. I am somebody who has probably over 5,000 hours in Gears of War as a trilogy. Wow. Well, it, well, it gives war as a series and probably way more than that because I used to play it competitively. Same thing for Halo. You know, the number one thing that I want because nobody in the Xbox community is playing that shit. Excuse me. Yeah, y'all aren't wrong. playing it. All the people that love Gears are not playing it. I don't see y'all online. Y'all do not play Gears the way that I play Gears because I'll be honest, Gears is not an easy game to play. People get turned off of it. Oh no! For dude, that I, I, reason, I, I, every, every time I played, I got wrecked, dude. It gets like, frustrating, I, and I get that. But how do you? The game. I don't want the game to become easier. That's no. the problem with Halo. So are, we're talking in circles around these games that I care and love for that don't extend their IP because the player base does not support their games. Both platforms have this problem. Xbox yeah. is an ecosystem. It has become a platform of value because of what they have intrinsically changed in the multiplayer aspect of gaming community. Yeah. Ecosystem. I know that I can sign into my Xbox and I can depend that my games are going to work. My servers are going to work. I can play multiplayer. I can have access to my backlog. They have, we have more access to a backlog than we've ever had on any other platform. Yes. Outside of PC. And they're marrying, and, and that is becoming a marriage. So why, is I? so for me, and again, it's just for conversation. This is just how I personally feel. Looking at it from an RTS view, I want more people to be able to experience the games that I have been able to love and experience for, for decades. Gears Trilly, if the Marcus Phoenix Collection came to PlayStation, that game is 20 years old. No more people are going to play the game today than they did back then. It's not going to happen because the same people who care about playing Fortnite, they're not going to play Gears. Fortnite and Gears are way, are way leagues across universes from each other. And I, we have to figure out ways and be open to more ways to get more people involved because at the end of the day, this is also what Xbox has trained us in mentality wise. They have been prepping us for this community, friendship, building online experiences. Uh, yep. This is what we have been building up to. And now we have a problem. Oh, if these games go here, man, Xbox isn't as special to me anymore. Why? What, what happened to everything that you had there? What happened to every, all, all the experiences that you gained? What happened to your backlog? What happened? That stuff still exists. And what if because of this, Xbox can now create hardware, they relieve themselves of being dependent on hardware and say, you know what? We can innovate even more now. And for the people that are part of our hardcore base, we're going to do this for you because we value you as a consumer. Now, the day that they, yeah. in the day that they do not do that anymore and things go full cloud, then we, we can have a different conversation. But things aren't going anywhere. Matter of fact, I think they're going to be, become better for us all around. Yeah. And if we want to get those experiences we have always loved, again, especially single player, something has to change. Because again, not every game is going to be Baldur's Gate. Not every game is going to be Power World, Helldivers. This is, you see the games that are releasing that are not even close in the concept of what, the, what we had before. And this is a brand new audience. We live in a the digital era, ladies and gentlemen. So that's just that's just my aspect on it. The razor's edge is very thin. I hear both sides. I get for those people who, again, to Umper's point earlier, if you have one particular platform over the other, if you cannot um, afford um, to invest in multiple different platforms, I am somebody that is trying to speak for you. As an Xbox gamer, as somebody who believes in my ecosystem, there's a reason I bought the Series X and S day one, even though I have a PC, because I believe in the ecosystem. Yep. There are still games today that I cannot play on PC because they don't have proper crossplay or my friends don't connect, whatever else the reason may be. I still have value in this. I don't think that value is ever going to get lost. For, for, I, for, I for agree. Me. Though I, I do. Know. Again, I want them to be, I do want them to be more aggressive with how they approach, how, how they approach things and be upfront for sure. 
So with all that said, I'm going to take it the very extreme fanboy way. <laughs> you just want all our games to go to PlayStation. Is that what you're telling me, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I do believe in equal exchange as well. I just, right now, I don't see anything else that's going to be of equal exchange, which I don't think, which is more of a reason I don't think Hellblade is going to come soon because there's nothing of equal exchange that I see coming from PlayStation as an example. Now you could say I could use that same thing for Sea of Thieves and whatnot, but they don't have any other multiplayer games to offer us that would be of value unless you're talking about Hell Divers. That is still a very that can still be a high possibility for that to happen. I think it is. That, I think I think the conversations conversation. are already happening for Hell Divers too, simply because but, you know they're leaving money on the table. Is. But and it, and it could come out two years later, three years later. Yeah. Yep. You know. At, at, but who is that hurt if it comes out later? The only person that hurt was the, the people that produced the game. Outside of that, I mean, you're not going to get your money up front. You'll get it later. But you can say that about anything. You have to decide what works for you in business. I just think, again, Xbox is trying to blow the top off, for lack of a better way to put it. I, they're, they're trying to, what Xbox is trying to do, and a lot of people who are older, uh, who, again, been, we've been conditioned to have, uh, you know, our, our, our certain way of look at consoles. They're changing the industry. The industry is changing. It's, it's a very expensive industry. Um, they they want to make money. Their investors want to make money. They want that return of investment. Um, I, I still think there are sacred cows you can't touch. I've already went over that. I'm not going to reiterate it, um, but we'll see. I am going to say this. Let me, I want to make sure I'm ca caught up on all the super chats, and I believe – oh, no, we had uh, we had a channel member uh, a chat come in, uh, Bunty. Uh, should I say Bounty, uh, it, 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 who's in the chat, who's been a channel member for 33 months. Dude, that is crazy generous Wagwan of you. Wagwan Bounty. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Wagwan, he says this. Boom, boom. Love the content. Love the work. Keep up the good work. Boom. Great job, brother. That's very kind of you mm -hmm. to say. And thank you for the kind words and, of course, the generosity. Folks, listen, a powerful two hours worth oh. of content if you are still here and we still have 600 people here please for the love of joe hit the like button and if you're finding the channel for the first time potentially consider subscribing i do this five days a week monday through friday all great content mm. all great messaging as well again we we, we, we don't console war here we right. give it to the platform that is deserving of the slander it's not out of uh, out of rhetoric it is not out of clicks and views and likes we have conversations now maybe you don't agree with them and i'm not going to fight you on it if you don't agree then you don't agree but i think that we do it right here uh Absolutely. steel let's get you out of here then you got to pick up your daughter Ow. from school sell the brand Absolutely. of living split screen saturday mornings 10 a.m eastern standard time with your brother from another pong soul you do it right each and every week talk about it sell the brand well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you love the conversation today. And if you didn't, look, I'm always willing to chop it up anytime. Um, again, gaming is the, is the number one hobby for me, and I will always love it to, uh, to the moon and back. Um, and I can't say that enough. So I greatly appreciate all of the chat for tuning in. But you can find me, Steel Rain. That's I, Steel Rain, I. The T is a seven everywhere. Google's the easiest place to type that information in. Um, but I frequent the streets of X and Twitter and the Xbox ecosystem uh, just because it works so well intrinsically between the PC and the console itself. Uh, also, every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and 3 p.m. UK time, I am one of the hosts of a non console centric platform known as Living Split Screen. Again, it's the home of the RTS View real-time strategy. We pull ourselves out of the world, look at the darker crevices of the map, pull those resources together so we can not only build up the foundation for the 3 billion gamers that Phil is talking about, but also the foundation for our own community. Um, and with that, uh, you can also find me right here on the Xbox Factor podcast with Mr. Boomstick XL. Well, I got a nice little, I don't know if my room got upgraded recently. I feel like I'm in a penthouse suite now, man. I got the tub in there. So the jacuzzi's feeling real nice. I got the bubbles going. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know if somebody's trying to tell me something. But well, that's what you uh, do anyway. with family, brother. That's what you do with family. You're, I appreciate you. Got <laughs> silk sheets and all that. I, I appreciate it. But nonetheless, um, it's always a great time chopping it up with y'all. Uh, Umbra, it's always dope have, being able to have a conversation with you anytime that I, we can get together. Um, and boom, I just appreciate you being a uh, pillar of community, being welcoming, you, being a, uh, a central point for a lot of us gamers to come together, have good conversation, and uh, just respect each other. So much love for that. Appreciate y'all. Ditto, ditto, brother. Right. Ditto. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hugs, kisses to the family, brother. We'll be talking soon. Thank you much so love. much appreciate once it. again. Uh, 
Umbra, uh, let, let, let's sell your brand, brother. Obviously, you do a show each and every Thursday with your brother from another. Danny, obviously, you're talking about The Fix. And it is a show that obviously talks about video games. But there's been a lot of Marvel news. I'm not sure if you've been, you know, keeping up to, uh, up to you know, with, with everything that's going on. The new Spider-Man. Are they bringing Toby back? Is he? Are we getting a, a new Spider-Man with Toby? I, lots of lots of happenings with Marvel. Uh, yeah. uh, thank goodness they reshifted from what was a terrible phase four. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just ooh, God, just not really yeah. good stuff. Uh, poor quality the, 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 content. The sweet baby era of Marvel, if you will. <laughs> no, let me just me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about sell the brand, but where can people subscribe? More importantly, where can people follow you on social media? And what else you got going on? Yeah, definitely. Want to thank you, Boom. Of course, like as uh, Steel pointed out, for being the the pillar of thank the community, you, brother, and doing what you're doing, and, and giving us a generous, as you would like to say, <laughs> platform <laughs> to come over here and, and host our, our speculations and and talk. And thank you, Chat, for holding us down and you guys uh, keeping us in check too. I will I say that humbly because again, I am always willing to learn. I do I do not think I know more than the next man. I think many of you all might know more than me on some things. I'm just gonna be honest. I just think my velvety smooth voice just sounds better here than you are. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I'm playing, I'm being playful. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys in the chat for holding us down too. And of course you can find me on Twitter X, uh, Infinite Umbra or Umbra Infinite. You'll find me either way. Give me a follow if you have not done so. I follow back. And as long as you communicate with me, that's the trick. I don't yes. just follow. If you actually communicate with me and interact, then I follow. I don't want, you know, I don't like just to be there. We, we're a community. Let's act like it, right? Um, Indeed. Yes. And of course, like Boone pointed out, the fix on Thursdays at uh, eight o'clock Eastern, myself and Danny, J, Daniel J. McG. Let me give him his proper, correct name. Uh, Daniel J. McG. <laughs> and uh, you're right. Yeah, we, we talk about everything from media, and it, Marvel would be one of them. Actually, one of the bigger things, and I'm sure Yobi, uh, my brother Yobi in the chat would would uh, agree, is what's going on in the WWE right now with The Rock and, and the Bloodline and all of that. I mean, it's been pretty epic, man. It's giving me a bit of that Attitude Era vibe mm. right now. I'm loving it, I got to say. And I've been out of wrestling for a long time. So seeing this right here has really reinvigorated me. Hell, it's almost got me ready to pre-order WrestleMania 40. So I'm, I'm, I'm really loving what I'm seeing. I'll just say that. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, come by sometime if you can and uh, give us a view on on the fix on Thursdays. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Yeah, thanks so much for being here and being a part of this show each and every week. A big thank you to the over 600 people we had here today. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you for supporting Double Barrel Gaming. Uh, a big thank you to all of the Super Chats and the channel members that are still here and continue to support us on a weekly, monthly basis. We are incredibly humbled by the generosity. And of course, folks, I'm going to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. Yeah. <laughs>